I've made a video about the almost complete unimportance of my name being cleared recently. Sadly, the ones who I think most need to hear it, including my children, are the least likely to listen. Like kick-starting a motorbike, the engine's been started now, so the attitude carries on unassisted. Some then decided a long time ago whether I should be listened to or not, and I'm unlikely to change that opinion now. Let me explain how prejudice hurts us every second of our life, but only hurts the victim when we show hostility to them. And my children are particularly at risk of this. They could deprive themselves of contact with a dad due to a now obviously unjustifiable prejudice. They and other intelligent humans can hurt themselves for years though. It's not the fault of my earlier weakness and inadequacy, or their mum's frequent severe pathological hatred of me, what doctors called dysthymia or chronic depression, that the liars claim they cured her of in one year. We believe what we want. We feel we're being sensible with the evidence and strangely others can't see our viewpoint. We offer the bait and take it. We turn bitterly against others, feeling the reasons of our own opinion. Here's a frank admission of this happening to a close friend I had. My friend Nigel died a few years ago, but towards the end he said, that when he was little, he hated his dad after his mum and dad divorced. The reason he gave himself for the hatred was not his uncritical accepting of his mum's complaints about his dad, but his dad used to spit, and this was a dirty habit. When his father later died, Nigel said he regretted that he stopped talking to him because of the spitting. When Nigel grew up though, as a smoker he said he used to spit too. Incidentally I met his mum and surprise surprise, she also was a spitter. So was it such a good reason to miss involvement with his dad over then? Crucially, Nigel never blamed his mum, saying she put me off dad, so I hated him too. In contrast, a neighbour called Hannah said she carried on visiting her mother and father after the divorce, even though the dad was always criticising his alcoholic ex-wife, Hannah's mum. In short, my son said prejudice spreads like a disease, but now he, the rest of the family and some others mostly say of me, we're better off without him. If people want to believe that, it's their choice. The point of this video, though, is prejudice hurts us, whether we realise it or not. I can hope and pray that certain people grasp how misguided their reasons to avoid me were. Research shows I shouldn't hold my breath, though. But I believe in miracles, so I can also hope and pray that they don't one day regret their frostiness like Nigel did.